function time and time again and have a good two days and then a bad three days and then a good four days and then a bad somebody say amen over him. If you don't learn how to get this word, then you can become like a gang to the enemy. Because if the word is not sown in your heart, I'm going to stop here and talk about it. If the word is not sown in your heart, you like a timid single. If you don't know what word to turn to and where to run to in a time of trouble, the only success for you and I, Josh, is in the word. Yes. It ain't no use in you and I sitting around wondering why God didn't do it and what's wrong with God. There ain't nothing wrong with God. What's wrong with us is that we are not doing it according to his system and his plan. You and I have got to know that when you live by faith, the only way of faith is in the word of God. There should be nothing more important than you finding time to sit down and get this word into your spirit. You have to sow the word into you like a seed. Yeah. It will produce a harvest of peace, of confidence, of victory. It will produce a harvest of healing and deliverance. It will produce all those harvests, but you got to sow it in and let it process itself. See, I heard something on TV. Everybody can't be one of the one billion people who are very unique, but everybody can be good. Listen, everybody sitting here and hearing my words right now, I don't care where you came from, who molested you, who rejected you, who told you you was no good, who didn't want nothing to do with you, what you think about yourself. Everyone, uh, everyone sitting here right now has the opportunity, if you choose to use it, to have success. There is, oh, glory to God. There is nothing that can hinder you and I from having success but us. When we start believing the lie of the devil and doing things outside of the will of God, then we put ourselves in a place where we then take responsibility for our own lives and we find ourselves going around this circle. You all ain't going to say amen, but it's the truth anyhow. And next time, you thought it was going to be different. And when you got right back, you, you, because you put in strawberry mix, you got strawberry drink again. And you prayed and fast for lemonade, but you put in strawberry mix, and you got strawberry drink. Somebody say amen. The reason why most of us are stuck is because we won't change the tape. Glory to God. I, I, I'm going to put this down because I'm off the message. We may not have no meeting tonight because I'm going to preach till 10 o'clock. I feel like preaching. The reason, listen, the reason why some of us are not making any changes is because we won't change the tape. That tape that's playing in our spirit, what we're not going to do and what we're not going to tolerate and what we're not going to put up with and who we're not going to talk to, we won't change the tape. So people around us change, but we don't change. Because the same tape keep playing. And it may, he may be named Larry today, it might be Harry tomorrow, but the same tape keep playing. Oh, glory to God. But if you don't change the tape, that's why most of us in here, we think we're poor, but you're not poor. You're just in a state of lack right now because you won't change the tape. Amen. The one thing I've learned about people is that everybody wants a great testimony. Nobody wants, to Nobody wants great tests. Because, uh, come on, everybody wants to preach about David and preach about Abraham. But what you need to do is take some time out to read about this man's life and don't read it as a character story. Put yourself in there where they at and wonder what they were going through when these things you shouting about was happening. Because everybody wants to have the testimony at the end of the story. But nobody wants to go to the desperation and despair that it takes to get the testimony. And what I originally came to talk to you about is that you have to understand that God chose you to be a showpiece. If you can hear me say amen. And you had nothing to do with it. You had absolutely nothing to do with it. He chose you to make you a showpiece. And when God's going to make you a showpiece, he starts with a lump of clay. Amen. Amen. And there's a process before he puts you on show. Yes. And then when he puts you on show, and when he wants to make you more productive and more beautiful, he begins to work again. Yes, true. That's true. Yep. That's true. Yes, yes. Can I get back to this here? So I understand that my inheritance is incorruptible and undefiled and fading not away. That means what God has for me is for me. Amen. It may look like I can't get it right now, but it's still for me. Yes. So what I got to do is start looking at what adjustments I got to make to position myself to receive it. I got to look at what goes with this inheritance because every inheritance is going to come by what? Promise. Yes. And it's not going to come through damage. God, I feel like preaching. I'm, I, I'm angry. That's what I am. I'm angry. I'm angry of dealing with church people all the time who seem to refuse to get the fact that God's system is in place and he's not going to change it. What you get from God is going to come through a promise. God don't need you to do nothing for him. If he's going to give you something, he's going to make you a promise. And sometimes that promise is not what? With an instruction. And the thing is, in order for you to get the promise, you have to first follow the instruction. If you heard me, say amen. amen. So I understand now that I have this inheritance. It's incorruptible, 
you was under fire. It's reserved for me. It don't matter what group of people you go to. It's reserved for me. There is no enchantment against Jacob. There's no divination against his, uh, Israel. God, God, I almost got here. There is no enchantment against Saul. There is no divination against Jacob. Let me tell you something. Uh, just for one person here, they can't fix you. That's true. Come on now. Preach. Yeah. Right Hallelujah. If they can fix you, the Bible line. That's right. Because you are under divine protection. You are covered and washed by the blood of Jesus. Hey. What chicken hey. blood can change hey. that? Before they you fix somebody, bring me the chicken. We got a short food shortage in the house. Watch this now, watch this. So, I understand right now that what's for me is reserved for me. What I have to do now is do the best to prepare myself to receive it. Oh, God, help me here. If you can hear me, gentlemen, don't say amen. What I got to do is have enough confidence in my God and enough confidence in me to begin to prepare myself to receive what God already told me he gave me instead of sitting around feeling sorry for myself while he's processing me to the place to get it instead of feeling sorry for myself I got to start positioning myself to get what it is that he promised me because he just told me it's incorruptible, it's undefiled, and it's faded not away. So what's mine is mine. What God has for me is me. Sometimes it looks like it's held up. Sometimes it looks like it's never going to happen. Sometimes Tell the devil, tell me I missed it. But what God has for me, I'm telling uh, because I'm on an eternal time, on eternal time, what he has for me is going to ma manifest according to the point in time. Yes. Yes. Somebody says, it's mine right now. It's mine right All the people who are facing it's mine right now. Mine. I might be catching a little hell, but it's still mine. I may be going through some things, but it's still mine. People might be tripping around me, but it's still mine. They didn't give it to me, and they can't take it away from me. It's incorruptible, and it's under fire. One day I'm going to walk right into it, he was his mind right now. All he's doing is processing me, so I can fit in the box, but I can't even receive it. I will come over to the up and say, still mine right now. Hey, if you believe that, say amen. That's why you're going through all this stuff. That's why all hell is breaking loose, because you're closer than you think you are. You're right at the door. You receive what it is that God has for you. That's why the enemy trying to discourage you. That's why he's bringing up all your past right now. That's why he's pointing everything you didn't do right right now, because you're so close that he knows he can't stop you from getting it, but he can stop you from walking to it. Yeah. I'm going to stop by that for a minute now that we're done here. Because I want you to understand that what God gave you is you. Who God made you is you. And when God put you in Christ, he perfected you to receive it. He didn't ask you to change nothing. He didn't ask you to adjust to nobody. When he put you in Christ, if adjustments need to be made, they will be made in the process. Now, it's up to you. When God said make the adjustment, it's up to you to change the tape and stop thinking nobody can tell you what they do. That's why God gave you pastors. I feel oh, I'm preaching good here. I'm preaching good good right here. And that's why God gave you pastors. So when God said, tell her, turn her left, she's supposed to turn her left. That's what the pastor's for. That's what the desk is for. And to get in your own personal business, is the lady before God before you and stand here and say, the Lord said, turn her left. Now, if you still have those things, take my daddy can tell me what to do. Ain't no preacher can tell me what to do. That's why you stop. That's why things ain't changing. Because you're not following instruction because you heard me say amen. amen. Woo, that man will go down and preach for a little while. I'm almost done. So I have an inheritance of incorruptible. I'm preserved from the good. I gotta stop here. Ah oh, God. Ah oh, boy, I've been dealing with so much. I've been tearing, I've been sharing so many tears lately. Uh, the Lord had to comfort me today, you know. He had me reading the Battle of Ziglag. I'm gonna preach about that on Sunday. Sometimes you're gonna cry about this thing. You emotional, you human. Sometimes you're gonna get hit the stuff that's gonna make you cry. Stop trying to be super spiritual. Sometimes that stuff will make you so hot. You can't even open your mouth. Stop speaking in tongues and cry. Cry and say again. Stop trying to speak in tongues and be super spiritual. Sometimes that stuff will hit you hard enough that let me open your mouth and talk in the chance to come out. Then you find yourself apologizing to the Lord. Lord, I don't really want to cry. I don't really want to cry, Lord. I don't really want to cry. Church folk can't stand on truth. Sometimes you want to get hit with some stuff out of left field that you didn't expect to come. And you're going to be floating along thinking everything will go the way you think it's going to go. And then you're going to get hit with the left hook. And it's going to knock you to your knees spiritually. And you're going to be lost for a minute. And you're going to be hurt for a minute. And you have to understand that why you hurt is okay to cry, baby. It did not mean you gave up on your faith. It did not mean you gave up on life. It just means that you're hurt. As a human being, you've been broken. And you're hurt. Cry your eyes out. And then when you get to the cry, get up and move on to the next thing. Amen. It's okay to cry. You 
release some of that pain when you cry. You release some of that stuff that you will cuss them out because you done already cried it out. Somebody say amen. Sometime before you get on the phone, cry it out. Because you might say the wrong thing when you get on the phone. Because like your Holy Spirit keeps telling me to tell someone, it's for you. It's reserved for you. When God saw you before your mama and your, your daddy, he already put your inheritance there. And he made it so easy for you to get it. He put you in the church where he can't count nothing against you and say, just follow instructions. Yes. Right now, I told you on a Sunday, I believe it was, yeah, you know this storm, the plan of this storm, but that's why I gave you pilots. That's right. They are connected to the tower. Yeah. The tower know where the next dip is. The pilot looking on the radar, he got to listen to instructions. Go six degrees to the right or six degrees to the left. So when the pilot gives you instructions, the pilot says, put your head down now. We get ready in September. Some, 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 what you call that? Some? Turbulence. Turbulence. So, so put your head down. Don't sit there coming. Nobody can tell me what to do. Not even my daddy. My daddy, I don't even know my daddy. How somebody can tell me what to do? 